one of the things that's kind of a bummer is when you have to talk to a pastor about what he's doing wrong when it comes to getting in front of a bunch of people and telling them gossip and rumor and slander. It's kind of a bummer when you have to talk to people about the same thing. Because you see, Jesus never wanted us to have to discuss with each other common sense things that the world does. You know, when the world gets into like political arenas or they get into politics or they get into divisiveness and backbiting, they act like a bunch of heathen. You know, Jesus called them Gentiles. He said that when you start to act like a bunch of Gentiles, then you're going to want to exercise lordship over one another. You're going to want to be in charge because, you see, when you want to be in charge and you're not serving one another, then you're really setting yourself up for a fall because you think you're more important than you are and you wind up not serving Jesus but serving your own self. So like in news abuse today, we want to talk about a subject that bothers me, but it also hurts me in a way that it's a shame that we should have to even bring it up because it's about a man of God who has taken a lot of hits, you know, a lot of flat out lies, you know, about him and kept silent for a long time. Not said anything because he just probably figured that just like Proverbs says, you know, don't let those, you know, people that wag their tongues and point their fingers worry about it. Just let your own actions speak louder than your words. Let your own manifestation of the peace, the love, the joy, the obvious salvations, the obvious fruit of your ministry demonstrate that God is with you. But you know, there comes a time when even the person who's being attacked is hurt enough, where they're being so assaulted by lies and deception and deceit by those who should know better that you have to stand up and say something. And this last weekend, Rick Warren did it. Because you see, Rick Warren has been the subject of a lot of controversy for a long time because he had a bestseller. Wow, he committed it to the Lord, you know, and he gave it over his life as well as his book to the ministry, you know, and God blessed it, and God used it the way he wanted to. God uses Rick Warren the way he wants to, not the way Rick Warren wants to. So people have come out against him consistently, making up all kinds of stories about what he does or what the book was about or how this has happened or what that happened. And, you know, they didn't say so at the beginning, you see, because if you go way back, you'll see that everybody was thrilled with what was happening. Oh, salvation, people getting saved. Wow, wonderful. God bless you, you know. Then later, you find all these people getting upset about purpose-driven life or whatever it may be. Anything that Rick does, they come out against which is typical because, you see, Greg Glory has the same problem. Greg Glory, when he comes out with an evangelism thing, there's always a group that's protesting and picketing and claiming he's like some kind of false witness. Or like Chuck Smith, when at times they would come out against Chuck Smith and say things. Or like how people even today will criticize Billy Graham of all people. I mean, how stupid can you get? I mean, come on now. Even the most common folk know that Billy Graham is a great evangelist. So, lately, the most important part of news abuse has been this demonstration by posting on the web by some very popular sites and even some pastors, Calvary pastors of all people, getting involved. But this popular site tried to slam Rick Warren and say that he believed in this whole phony idea of Chrislam. You've heard of Chrislam, you know, this false idea that came out of Africa that you know, about 200 people participated in, and then it got blown out of proportion on the web. You know, oh, you've seen the sites, you know, where they say, oh, Chris Hom is invading America. And you can't find a church that does it. And then you find like, oh yeah, here's a church. Oh yeah, and here's another one. The prophecy sites are telling us that it's just taken over America, but the number of churches seems to be 12, and the number of people, 200. Oh yeah, but Rick Bourne is one of them, you know, because he's, He's part of Chrislam. And then, finally, this last weekend, the truth comes out. God, in his mercy for Rick, decides to reveal 
the facts. So Rick, in his own way, was interviewed on Christian Post, you know, and finally came out and says, look, this is what I believe. This is what I teach. This is who I am. I said it all along. It's not like I'm telling you anything new. It's not any different than I've said from the beginning. It's not any different than I said in the end. I'm still the same person. And when you examine the proofs, when you talk to the man, then you find that maybe you've been brainwashed by somebody somewhere along the way that wanted to make you think something that wasn't true. Like I could tell you right now, hey, you know what? I'm wearing long pants and it's raining out. And you may look out your window and say, it is raining out, so he must be wearing long pants. Well, no, because where I'm at, it's not raining. And I'm obviously not wearing long pants. I'm catching some rays because you know what? I'm being blessed. God has given me just a wonderful blessing in this weather. And I've been able to grow my tomato plants. They're popping up all over. And God has just really blessed me phenomenally because I've chosen not to go into kind of like, you know, this snack attack, you know, and shack attack. And, you know, let me build up my ministry in order to, you know, get people in so that I can witness to them. But I'm going to slam like President Obama. I'm going to slam Rush Limbaugh. I'm going to highlight all these failures of people. Or am I going to heal, help, and not hinder the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of these men as God uses them? You see, God has given us something very interesting. It's called the Word of God. Now, one of the things that I get frustrated about is, and I really shouldn't because, you know, Romaine's gone. And so since Romaine's been gone, I'm sure that Calvary pastors have gone off on their tangents and decided that some of them can just say what they want to say, do what they want to do, and get away with it. And I've seen it because they do it on the web. And the sad part is I pray for them because, you know, I know this. Just like the old comic book that Greg Laurie drew one time that said, you know, how the hounds of heaven will come after you. They'll be like pursuing you, you know, the grace and mercy, the grace and mercy, the grace and mercy, you know, they're going to come and get you. And he was using it for salvation. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And in my righteousness, according to God, in this occasion of presenting to you a news abuse, I pray for the pastors that they would repent. Because in this area, they're wrong. Because we don't lift up some man of God and then claim he's not saved. We don't lift up some circumstance and then claim it's not accurate. What we do is we prove the fact that if we lift up Jesus, we would draw all men to him. And we prove whether or not we're a witness by the love that we have for one another. Because Jesus said it this way. He said, this is how you will know that you are my disciples indeed, and that you have love one for another. So, right off the bat, what do they do? Oh man, you got John, you know, saying, hey, I want to be in charge. You know, I want to be the man in charge. I want to sit at your right hand, and I want Peter to sit at your right hand too. And, you know, then they get the mother involved, and the mother comes up and says, Jesus, I want you to put my, you know, sons, you know, in charge, you know. I want them to be like here and there. And he says, well, it's not for me to say, but if, you know, God puts them there, then my Father in Heaven does, well, then that's different, but, you know. You don't really know what you're asking because they're going to die if they do. I've had to listen to, praise the Lord, you know, and experience just in the Calvary Chapel movement of all things, pastors telling me, oh, when Chuck Smith dies, I want to be in charge. Oh, when Chuck Smith is gone, I want to do this. Oh, when Chuck's gone, this is going to happen. Oh, when Chuck's gone. You know what? Since the time that I had to be involved in different ministries that have gone through this maturing process where the pastors finally give up on worrying about that. Thank God they got past it, some of them. And they no longer worry about who's going to do what, but they do what God is telling them to do. Because you don't need to focus on what Chuck's doing. You need to focus on what God is doing. Because if God is using you, God bless you, your ministry is probably right where it needs to be. And you don't need to worry about Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa or the big denomination, so to speak, but really focus in on what God has got you uniquely to do. And it isn't to tear down someone else's ministry or try to put yourself in charge 
of someone else's ministry. Because Jesus said it this way. He said, look, you know, I know you're upset that John's disciples are baptizing, but no man can do what they're doing except that they receive it of God. And God is the one who's given them the anointing and appointing to do what it is they have been called to do. Even Chuck Smith came out one time, you know, and they were really going to put a trick before him. You know, they were going to pull a, a Pharisee and Jesus routine. You know, they, they decided, hey, you know what? Man, we're ready for Chuck. We're going to take him down finally. You know, we're going to get him. You know, we're going to like, you know, pull out our knives and we're going to slice and dice and we're going to cut him up into pieces, you know, and then we're going to chew on it because we're going to get him because he's getting old, you know, and now we can trick him into saying something on the radio program because it's a calling thing. So they went ahead and they set it all up. They go, oh, you know, we know, Chuck, that you, oh, yeah, you were sitting next to Rick Warren. <laughs> and would you, you know, as a pastor of a Bible teaching ministry, sit next to somebody like that? <laughs> kind of stupid, isn't it? You know, they weren't saying like sitting next to like, you know, a Pharisee or sitting next to a harlot or a prostitute because they would have accepted that. Oh no, you know, he's sitting next to Rick Warren of all people. <laughs> you know, we got to take care of this one. <laughs> we'll get him down and annihilate him. And you know, Chuck was so perfect in what his answer was. Again, he says, look, he's saved. I have no problem with that. I know he's saved. You know, that's, that's pretty easy. You know, he, he loves the Lord and God is using him. And, you know, God has told him that, you know, this is where the ministry goes. And if God is leading him, he says, look, that's your ministry. Then that's between you and God. I only know what my ministry is and what I'm called to do. What his ministry is, what he's called to do. And besides, you know, sitting on stage, what difference does it make? You know what I mean? We're all there to share and were invited by Greg Laurie. So they tried to set him up for a fall and he walked around it by way of the Holy Spirit, which is pretty simple because in reality, that's what you should be doing. Every time that somebody comes to you and tells you, oh, Rick Warren is part of this cult teaching, ask them if they talk to him. Seriously, because you see, Rick's a little bit used to this stuff, apologetic wise, and kind of like all these people all upset about, oh no, it's like Jesus, he's going to the sinners. <laughs> oh my God, what a terrible idea. Ask him. He's available. Go to him. Talk to him. Get it from the horse's mouth. Because you see, you could tell me what's in this book. And I have people do it all the time. People will say, God won't give you anything bigger than your, you can handle. And it's in the Bible. And I'll say, no, it's not. But see, yeah, it is. No, it's not. But see, yes, it is. I say, no, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. I say, show me. You show me. Not me show you. I have no. Hey, you're the one that's wrong. I don't care. You know, you show me what the scripture says, because I can already tell you it's not there. You can Google it. Because it doesn't say God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle. It says, there is no temptation taking you as such as common man of God's faithful, not so you'll be tempted but with the temptation also make way to escape the real bear. In other words, the misappropriation of interpretation is what they're doing because they've heard some popular statement. Now you, O oh man of God, meaning you pastor, you teacher, you elder, you deacon, you normal person going to a church, listening to all these other people, kind of like blowing out of proportion things, making up a false boogeyman, like Chrislam of all things. First of all, Islam, if anybody knows it, doesn't deal with Christianity. It will not. They don't accept it. They don't like it. It's like, no, you guys, you know, you only got part of the point. You don't have the accuracy. We do. And no matter what you say, we are right and you're wrong. And that's what it says in the Quran. You know, hey, we're right, you're wrong. Guess what? You know, we're here to fix it. Kind of like the way the Mormons did. Same thing was true with Christianity. Christianity says, hey, look, it's, uh, no, I'm sorry, Muhammad wasn't a prophet, but you know what? We can't tell you that because you'll kill us. <laughs> but, you know, if we die as martyrs, we'll praise the Lord, you know. But Jesus, you know, is the Son of God, not just, you know, kind of like a prophet. You know, so, sorry, you know, if you really believe in the Bible, you got to believe what it says. Kind of like what people say about the Bible, you can't make up some false theology and come out and try to make it sound like people are in it. Especially when you can Google Chrislam and find no factual basis for any major, oh my God, denomination, church, or people getting 
Oh, we're part of Chrislam. We have started this new organization called Chrislamic America. But listen to the prophecies and listen to the prophecy sites. And suddenly you get, oh, America's losing its way. Yeah, right. Give me a break. How dumb is that? About as dumb as calling Rick Warren a person who doesn't believe in God but believes that the God of Muhammad is the same God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't think so because this last weekend, in case you didn't catch it, there were five articles posted just on what I post. There were f three articles posted on Christian Post, which, or Christian, Christian Post, I think it's called Christian Post, big Christian magazine. Came out big expose about how people in newspapers even were busted for false reporting. Now I can tell you the names of a few sites and a few pastors that you know have done the same thing because they still didn't offer an apology. They still, in their own righteous indignation, have promoted the false teaching right now about Chrislam and the false idea that Rick Warren is somehow the ringleader of it all. If you think about it, what kind of ministry do you want to have? Do you want to be all about creating tabloid Christianity, where every time some sensational idea comes out, you're going to jump on a bandwagon and say, yes, we have now Chris, uh, what, what, what can we call it? Mormianity. Yeah, you know, Mormianity. It's the cross between Mormon and Christianity that we're going to call it Mormianity because, after all, Mitt Romney's going to get elected. Yeah, right. Come on, give me a break. There's no such thing as Mormianity. But guess what? Now that I've said it, someone will run with it, and some prophecy site will say, now the country's being flushed down the tubes by the Mormon religion. I think they tried that back in the 1800s, and there was kind of like, you know, where they started killing off Mormons, you know, and the same thing, Mormons killed a few Christians, you know, because of the kind of like feud that was going on. Kind of got a little nasty for a while there, if you read history. So, I hate to say it, but in some of this, like, news abuse, you need to realize that if you're posting something false, then you're a false witness. If you're promoting some of these false ideas, and they've been proven false, then you are giving out some false teaching. And you're accountable for that. If you're doing this on a social media, it's just like standing up in a theater and saying, fire. And you could be sued for it. Aren't you glad Rick Warren's a little more loving than that? Be careful. You who visit social media and then just want to pass it around without looking at what's being said. Be mindful of the things of the Spirit when God wants to use you and not let you abuse the news in order to confuse people. Because, to put it bluntly, God is not the author of confusion. He has revealed the truth this last weekend. And He has now said very bluntly, in a very obvious way, by multiple witnesses, pastors and teachers and ministers and news authorities that are accurate in their reporting that no, there is no Rick Warren in Chris Law, and to report so is a lie and I know you don't want to be called children of a lie much less promoters of the father of lies so can I give you a hint is this really that boring that you have to go out and pick on something else than the Word of God. I mean, speaking for the Calvary pastors, what's so bad about teaching the Word that you think it's so good to slam other pastors? What's so wrong about this Word that you've been given a precious heritage by Chuck Smith himself as well as Jesus Christ working through the Holy Spirit in Chuck as the anointing has gone on to him and you have become under that covering of being a Calvary Chapel ministry, that you have to deviate into subject matter that's not about, you know, the Word of God? Is it really now about getting into worldliness 
and politics and subject matter that's more tabloidism than Holy Spirit? I think it's a little bit of news abuse. I think that, like Romaine would say, oh, yeah, that sounds a little fleshy to me. God, get him! I think that maybe it's time to listen a little closer to what God is telling you to do. Because I can tell you what I did, and this video is it. So, pastor, prophet, teacher, elder, deacon, I don't care who you are. If you think that Rick Warren is a Christian, you've been deceived. As a matter of fact, you're not only deceived, you're lied to. And unless you repent, you're going to keep following down that path and you need to root out that bitterness you got inside. Because I don't care what you think about anything else. In this abuse, abuse, in this abuse of your ministry or your privileges as a person saved by grace and mercy, you're not being a witness for Jesus, but you are being a witness for the offense, and that's not God's side, but it is Satan's accusing side. So you see, you're actually trying to be the prosecutor, and that's not your job. Your job really is to work with the defense. You know, that's what Jesus came to do, to defend us before the Father, because the accuser of the brethren is Satan. And in news abuse, you sure don't want to be accusing people. Now do you? <laughs>